I'm Edwin Torres. I'm with the Rockefeller Foundation. And at the foundation, we're particularly concerned with the issue of resilience in cities. Uh, this is specifically in light of the fact that uh, rates of change continue to accelerate. And while this increased level of connectivity is a positive, it also creates the opportunity for negative impacts to uh, uh, snowball very quickly throughout systems. So this creates uh, the necessity of creating resilience within systems, and specifically in cities. Um, when you have uh, uh, the vast majority of cities uh, are coastal, and the vast majority of the poorer populations are actually closest to the water, you have increased risks of flooding thanks to climate change, thanks to sea level rise and rainfall variability, and you really need to look at uh, resilience through uh, a system lens. It's something larger than seawalls. It's something specifically about governance issues, layers of governance being in close dialogue with each other. An example is uh, the city of Surat in India. Um, the Ukai Dam is governed by the state of Gwaharat, and periodically, thanks to uh, increased rainfall variability needs to do an emergency release. It hadn't occurred to them to be in close dialogue with the government of the city of Surat, which is right below that dam. So when they do those emergency releases, historically the city of Surat just floods. Um, now increasingly, thanks to work we're doing in, uh, in Asia through the Asian Cities Climate Change uh, Resilience Network, uh, now they're, they're working closely together so that they're able to anticipate uh, uh, when they need to do an emergency release so that the city can prepare for it. But they're also working with uh, uh, the local government to make sure building ordinances allow for the fact that flooding will occasionally happen. And as a systemic approach, this is uh, the city and the state also partnering with local industries. You have a huge uh, manufacturing base in Surat. It's, it's where the majority of the saris are actually manufactured. Those manufacturing sites need not to flood. Uh, a, lot of their a lot of their workers actually live on site. They actually live in the manufacturing facilities. Those facilities flood, you won, you have manufacturing shut down, and then you have suddenly homelessness. Uh, so this is an example of what we're doing to build resilience in cities throughout the world.